this this lure right here this little worm catches more fish than you can imagine Welcome to Glory Bound Outdoors, guys. Today we're going to do something a little different. Uh, I'm going to have a hard time getting through it probably because I'm not a great speaker. And all this is going to be just a bunch of talking today. But anyway, I just wanted to go over some of my equipment with you. I know some of you guys are wondering exactly what I'm using and, and how I'm catching all these fish. And uh, First off, let me say... Uh, I'm not a great fisherman, never have been. Uh, there's days I go out and I skunk. Uh, but I can remember a time a few years ago where I'd, I would literally skunk out five, six, seven times. Uh, but uh, I was trying to follow, you know, what you see on TV. You know, you got to buy the biggest, fanciest, most expensive lure on the market to catch these fish. And what I quickly realized is, is uh, man, I tell you, uh, I like fishing with soft plastics. It's the cheapest thing that's on the market. I mean, you literally, this this lure right here, this little worm catches more fish than you can imagine. I don't care how you rig it. I don't care if you wacky rig it, you know, like this, or if you Texas rig it. Uh, either run it weightless or Man, with a Texas rig with a bullet weight out in front of it, just just dragging it or hopping it off the bottom with a with a number number three or number four hook, that thing will flat out catch fish. I don't know what it is about it, but especially when you wacky rig it, that 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 slow float with that with that wiggle just flat out catches fish. Bass cannot stand it; they have to bite it. But anyway. As you can tell, I, I like the worm a lot. I don't care what size they are, how they come, the worm is deadly. Let me show you a worm that I use a lot. Uh, this is a, I'm not even sure what this is even called. I, 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 just, I just find them in the store and buy them. But this is a, what I call a J-tail worm. Now this little little J rig on the end of this this worm, it 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 literally flops and, and flips and it looks like a fin. You can you can drag this straight, you know, just just pull it in straight, and it swims and it looks great. The way I've got it rigged here, it looks weightless, but it's not. I put I put a a a, 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 a good grief. A weight right here in the middle of it okay and what it does is when you're pulling this thing it gives it a nice drop and then you can pop it up and it'll drop but the whole time this tail is flipping and man I'm gonna tell you what that dude I, I've caught tons and tons and tons of fish on that rig right there uh, you can't go you can't go wrong with that I know it looks weird but uh but man it works great but anyway uh, now second to a worm and actually first to a worm just depending on what you're fishing you cannot go wrong with a helger mite some of you may be asking what in the world is a helger mite a helger mite is the larvae of a dobson fly and they are naturally occurring uh, they live in uh, in rivers and streams and, and, and lakes and whatever, but this is the Nico, Nico brand Helgramite. Now, you can't find these everywhere. You can buy them off their website, but, but most of the time I just buy them straight off of, off of uh, Amazon. Now, they are kind of expensive. Uh, that little bag of four is like $7, and I know that sounds outrageous. But uh, I'm going to tell you, they're the toughest lure on the market. Uh, these things, you can, you can stretch them, pull them. They're, they're indestructible. You can catch a thousand fish on that, I swear, as, as long as you don't lose it. That's the only reason I have to buy more is because I, I get them hook, hooked up and, and I wind up losing them. But uh, 
anyway, Nico brand. That's that's the kind you, the, that you need to get. They actually have a scent uh, that's in them, uh, but and they say that you can reactivate the scent by pulling on them. But the way I rigged this, and of course you can see right here, I've got a weightless, uh, weedless rig right here. And this dude, when he, when you throw it, it winds up sitting in the water like this and it's it literally sits about two inches below the surface and what i'll do is i'll throw it out and just let it sit for a second because a lot of times they hit it as soon as it hits the water but if they don't hit i'll just pop it a little bit and drag it a little bit and you can see how this thing just just goes crazy and then i'll let it sit and then i'll pull it and pop it and let it sit and it usually doesn't take long. They're they're all over that dude. Now, what you can do is, uh, and, and I do this a lot, is I take just a regular Ned Rig hook, either a 16th ounce or a 10 ounce, something like that, and you can use a Ned Rig on that and just just basically run it just like a Ned Rig. But you can see the action this thing has, and and these naturally occur and hang out under rocks so that's where the fish are really kind of expecting them to be so uh very very deadly on small mouth and and guys have been using them for small mouth but i tell you what i i have found that large mouth just can't resist them either so anyway over my now something else that i use a lot uh is the uh is the swim bait. Let's go to that one. Well, good boy. You know how it is, guys. Get wrapped up. Now, this is the Kitek easy shiner and that's a four inch now they make a three inch and a two inch but this is all i can find here in town so this is what i've been using for now but uh the four inch man this thing is just catching all kinds of stuff man they've got great action they are not as tough as the the negro brand uh, uh you will be replacing these quite often but man i'm going to tell you what of course you can see i've got this one rigged up upside down uh, but but I just run these things with a any kind of jig out front, depending on how how deep I want to go and how wind you know how strong the current is, whatever. And actually, this one's strong, right? Sometimes uh, what I'll do is if after I wear wear them out a little bit, I'll have to flip it around and I'll I'll actually run it upside down just to be able to use it more. But the the, the bass just don't seem to care. Uh, but uh. But that swim bait right there is fantastic, I'm telling you. Uh, get you some of those, and I prefer white. I, I've tried uh, all kinds of colors, but uh, the white seems to be uh, the best uh, setup there. Now, this is something else. This is a fluke. These flukes are awesome as well. And I'll run a, a three or four inch uh, worm hook on them. And I run these either weightless or or I run them, you know, with a little bit of weight out front, like a real light bullet weight, whatever. But what I like these uh, is I can go ahead and cast them out and just pop them and pull them and pop them and pull them. And these swim just crazy. Got great action, man. And, uh, well, and you can rig them up like another way is a lot of people go ahead and nose hook them with a small hook out front because um, I don't know I was I was watching some other guys videos uh, uh, and they were saying that that they have done studies and video camera studies that uh, show that these things uh, when the bass hit them they hit them from the side and the front so they say they get a lot better hookup from nose hook up but whether that's true or not, I, I don't know. Uh, those guys uh, probably know more about it than I do. But but uh, anyway, I catch a lot of fish on those. Now, 
as far as uh, you know, like hard baits, I use very few hard baits, but when I do, I use something small. I don't use a lot of lot of big uh, hard baits. Now, there's lots of guys that catch tons of fish on huge hard baits, but for me personally, number one, I don't like dealing with a, a bunch of hooks. Man, you know, when you're hooking, you're fishing creek bottoms and tight quarters and, and on small boats and stuff, those hooks get hooked into everything. And and honestly, I man, I get just as good a hook set up on a, just a single hook like that. Uh, once those fish have that hook in their mouth, it, it, it's all over. But uh, but if I do fish with with a hard bait, it's usually a, a, some kind of small square bill, uh, something that uh, sometimes I'll use a suspending one. Uh, that way I can that way I can pull it. And if it starts to get too deep and I start getting into a bunch of junk, I can let it let it suspend and just kind of pop it, drag it real slow and pop it, and I catch a lot of fish that way. But um, anyway, now I will use uh, Texas rig crawdads a lot of times, especially in uh, early part of the year. Uh, when you've got fish that are getting close to being on their beds uh, and of course you can throw crawls in the beds as well and just uh, You know get those fish uh, with a crawdad but anyway um, I've got a uh, I've got a guy a uh, A subscriber that sent me all the way from holiday, Texas sent me some jigs and uh, Companies called gorilla jigs um, I've, this is actually a guy that I, I know. We used to hunt together many years ago, and, but, but he lives in Holiday, Texas, and, and he's got into kayak fishing quite heavy, and, and I guess he's making his own jigs now. And he, he, he said, hey man, I, tell me what you need and I'll send you a bunch of jigs. But I was gonna open these up and see exactly what we've got here. <clears throat> Now normally I stick to a, a 64 ounce or a, even a real light, I mean a 64 uh, ounce or a 32 ounce, something like that. I don't fish real heavy jigs, jig heads, but anyway, oh man, those are pretty nice. I don't know if you can see those or not. But it looks like he's got all kinds of different colors there, different sizes. But those look great, man. I'll, I'll definitely use those. Thank you, Brandon. I really appreciate that. I will, uh, I'll be catching fish with those, and you'll see them on my videos. But anyway, that's awesome, man. If you... If y'all want to order some jig heads or something, just give me a holler and we can, uh, I can try to get you hooked up with him and get you some jig heads. Now, now as far as rods go, <laughs> this is a cheapo H2O Express rod that, it's a $49 rod, but I, I got it on clearance for $13. And I looked at it and I thought, man, 13 bucks, you just can't hardly beat that. So uh, <clears throat> I bought the rod and I thought, well, hey, it'd be a good backup anyway. And uh, it's a, uh, you know, it's like a, it's a 6.6 uh, medium, medium heavy rod, uh, nothing special. And I thought, hey, I'm going to buy a used Abu Garcia. I, I bought that little Abu Garcia, that Black Max right there for $25 used. And I'm going to tell you what, this flat out works. I have caught tons and tons of fish on that little setup right there. And it, I think it's mainly because it's, uh, because I, I throw lighter stuff on it and I just don't throw a whole lot of real heavy stuff. And, and this this setup just just flat out works. I don't know. I have I have yet to find a fish that could that could overpower it. But okay. Now this rod, this rod is nice. 
This is uh, something I wouldn't normally spend this much money on, but uh, this is a, uh, a, a Dobbins rod, and uh, this is a 734C heavy fast action. Now the Dobbins rods run a little bit lighter than what's advertised for me. Normally I like a medium heavy. Uh, this pole right here is a heavy, and it feels more like a medium to hit, but it's it's definitely got backbone. Don't get me wrong. Uh, you can pull fish out all kinds of junk with this, but uh, the, uh, I, I teamed it up with a, uh, a Pro Max uh, reel, uh, Abu Garcia, and uh, this thing has been flawless, man. I, I'm, I'm running just a, a 30 pound braid, which I found that I like 30 pound, I don't know why, but um, this is a 30 pound braid. I usually run like a 10 pound fluorocarbon uh, leader on it. This rod is super sensitive, man. You can, you can feel it all. I, I just, I love this rod. It's just, uh, it's just odd that a lot of times I, I catch more fish on this cheapy just because I happen to have it in my hand and I'm throwing lighter stuff. But if you're going to do some, uh, if you're going to throw Texas crawls or, or run a worm uh, in a bunch of junk or, um, you know, looking for something that you can throw some, uh, some uh, big swim baits on or spinner baits or something like that, this thing's got the power. And, like I say, the, the craftsmanship, the quality of this rod is just impeccable. Love it. Love it. Now, all that said and done, uh, this uh, honestly is what I've been using most lately. I'm, uh, I never was a spin cast guy, but once I started fishing creek bottoms, I quickly realized, you know, throwing these smaller baits and stuff, that you gotta, you gotta have spin, spin caster. But this is the the uh, Laser TSX Lose. Uh, this is not what I caught a lot of those fish on. I actually caught them on the uh, that little lose combo that you buy at Walmart, 49 bucks. Uh, it's got the shorter handle on it, and it's just a medium action uh, um, rod, and it's got a little bit smaller series reel on it. But as you can see in, in one of my latest videos, that the reel crapped out on me, so. Uh, I took it back to get my money back and, and they didn't have any more because I, I love that six foot rod. This is a six six, but I love that little six foot rod for creek fishing. And, uh, but anyway, I couldn't find them anywhere in town. So I just took that money and I, and, I, and I spent the same money and bought this rod. It's a six six medium action. And uh, so far, uh, I like it. Uh, do I like it better than the six footer? I don't think so. Uh, with the same rod, the same, the same IM7 rod in a 6.6, it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit weaker on the tip, and doesn't seem to have quite as much backbone as that shorter six, six foot rod. Uh, but anyway, I'll get used to it. Uh, I have caught a bunch of bass on it already, and some crappie, so uh, you'll be seeing that quite a bit more. Now, some have probably been wondering what kind of boots I'm wearing. These have been fantastic. These are some Magellan boots that I bought uh, from Academy, and I can't remember how much they cost, but they're not super cheap. I think I might have paid, oh, $40, $40 for them, maybe. I can't, I can't remember, but, uh, but man, they're great. They've got, they've got this flap here that keeps out rock and sand once you zip it closed and then it's also got a uh, strap around the ankle <clears throat> strap around the ankle and you can make the the ankles as, as tight as you want which keeps out all that junk very rarely do i actually get rocks in these boots and and that's what man i'll be honest with you that's what chases me out of creeks is i just i got sensitive feet i guess but when i try to wear tennis shoes or something like that wading shoes you always get rocks in your in your in your shoes, and I I just can't stand that. So these look a little, look a little goofy, but I, I don't care. Uh, these are great. Uh, they've actually got pretty good traction. Uh, 
course, I fall down sometimes, you know, fishing those creeks. You know, you're on those super steep banks and you step wrong and and uh, down you go. But but anyway, if you're interested, be, you can buy those at Academy. I've, I've really enjoyed them and, and uh, beat them up and, and man, they've been tough so far. Now, the packs I've been using, uh, this is another Magellan pack that I, I've used. This is a uh, more like a, a sling style. This has been a great little pack. I actually bought this for fly fishing. <clears throat> bought this for fly fishing, and, and, I, and I do a lot of fly fishing with it. But, but you can put all kinds of things in there, you know. You can actually put two of these in there, but it's pretty darn tight. Uh, I try not to put two in there all the time. Uh, this will carry just about everything I need because I fish with a lot of small stuff. Uh, I've got some little Nico stone flies in there. Uh, they're great uh, for panfish or whatever. And then you've got, I've got a bunch of trout magnets in here. Uh, and of course, they they slay the panfish and, and bass bite them. And there's, like I say, there's a square bill I run sometimes, but but uh, it seems to be enough between that and and all the soft baits that I keep in other pouches. I can usually uh, get by with fishing the creek bottom and really catch a lot of fish. But I've got that pack, and then I've got just a regular old backpack. My, my loving wife bought this one for me for two dollars in a garage sale and and you can put two of the two of these big boxes in there uh, plenty of room for stuff you know I usually keep plastics in there a bunch of stuff like that but I don't know you don't have to spend a, a ton on packs you can you can get by with a lot of stuff there just with hang in there guys we got we got more more fishing. I've got a I've got a little uh, bass raider that I'm getting ready for this next spring. Man, we're gonna do some uh, some lake fishing and pond fishing. Uh, it's it's deer season right now. And we got some great bucks on our place. Um, hopefully, we're gonna we're gonna connect on one here real soon. But but anyway, I'll start the uh, video on that. Uh, I don't have. A really good camera that zooms real great yet so so may, the video quality may not be the top notch but but uh, I think we'll still have fun but just and, and I'll, I'll be doing fishing in between there as well so just uh, hang in there with me and, and, and enjoy enjoy my adventures maybe you're stuck at home and physically can't fish or hunt or, uh, or maybe you just don't really feel like you got a place to go or don't know how to do it, whatever that's what this is for too. So just follow along with me and, uh, and uh, I appreciate every one of you. And uh, God bless and uh, we'll see you next time.